China is the homeland of rhododendrons and azaleas. There were over 540 original species growing in China, 60% of the world total. The rhododendrons living in the valleys, like the rhododendron giganteum, were called Ju Ju in ancient times. They were typically found in the mountainous regions of southwest China, especially in alpine areas, 3,000 meters above sea level. The Hongduan Mountains are home to many of these alpine rhododendrons. When in full bloom, the flowers hang in clusters off the branches, forming splendid torrents of color. The climate changes between the Qinghai Tibet Plateau and the Hongduan Mountains directly affect their morphology and distribution. The Ga Ma Valley in Tibet is one of the deepest and remotest valleys in the Himalayas, not far from the eastern approach to Mount Cuomo Langma. The alpine rhododendrons are found in groups and scattered across slopes. They have evolved to adapt to the extreme cold of winter in an environment where no trees can survive. <laughs> Chu Boa studies the classification of paraglacial plants in the Himalayan and the Hongduan mountain ranges. He has made many excursions around Tibet to survey and collect samples. Chu 它高度呢不及五厘米，那这样它适应高山的这种环境下，但是呢，它又可以开出很绚丽的花朵。This tiny rhododendron is closest to the heavens. It can survive in an altitude of up to 5,300 meters. To resist the cold and wind, the roots cling to the rocks, forming a cushion of vegetation. They save energy by huddling together for warmth in vast swathes of bushes. These young men explore to collect data and specimens for conservation. They don't like the label plant hunters, but think of themselves as nature-loving plant taxonomists. The In the 1970s, China launched its first comprehensive scientific survey expedition on the Qinghai Tibet Plateau. More than 400 Chinese scientists from different disciplines visited the plateau again and again. Their exploration over two decades 
has inspired the new generation of plant taxonomists. Now the students follow in their teacher's steps to explore this virgin land. The plant classification work can be tedious and tiring. It involves long hours of field research and a slow accumulation of knowledge. Only the most dedicated can stick with it. Specimens and photographs are needed as samples for useful scientific research. This helps the scientists gain a better understanding of the evolution of the alpine flora on the high plateau. Their nine-day expedition is coming to an end. By special agreement, they each pick one rhododendron as a gift for their families. The rhododendrons are with them every step of the way. Exbury Gardens in Southampton was owned and designed by Marie Louise's great grandfather, Lionel Nathan de Rothschild. Gardens is going to celebrate its 100th birthday. Marie Louise will design a commemorative garden to celebrate the family's century in gardening. Morning, Tom. Morning, Mary Louise. How are you doing? Yeah, fine, thanks. Yeah, it's great. Lovely day. What a day. Fantastic. It's coming up. Well, I mean, it's quite interesting to see how the garden actually flowers differently depending on whether, you know, just how much shade it gets. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll probably, if I take a photo of it, I can... So it's a predominantly herbaceous garden with some shrubs for structure um, and we've built it in one of the old tennis courts. My great-grandfather had two tennis courts because everyone needs to have two tennis courts so that you can play one tennis court in the morning and one in the afternoon and never get the sun in your face. So for the public, which we will open next year. The Rothschild family was and is one of the most important banking families in Europe. In the 19th century, they acquired enormous wealth as bankers. Their influence is still considerable. My great-grandfather always said that he was a banker by hobby and a gardener by profession. And he managed to acquire Exbury as an estate in 1919. And he set about, basically in 20 years, into war, creating the extraordinary garden that, that you'll see today. Lionel Nathan de Rothschild was different from others in the grand family. He was obsessed with gardening. He funded a large number of plant hunters, including George Forrest and E.H. Wilson, Apparently, my grandfather spent most of the time in the garden. I think my great-grandmother 
known as Dee Dee, Marie Louise, who I'm actually named after, didn't get to see a lot of her husband because he was out in the garden an awful lot. The Wardian case was invented in 1829 by Dr. Nathaniel Ward. Protected inside the glass, it allows plants to survive the long sea journeys in the salty environment, which would otherwise have killed them. When Lionel first saw his first live alpine rhododendron in its Wardian case, he was inspired. But Exbury Gardens is near an estuary where the soil contains lots of sand and barely retains water. The rhododendrons from China couldn't live in that environment. In his pursuit of beauty, Lionel Rothschild spent 10 years altering the soil over 250 acres of land into an acid soil suitable for rhododendrons. he had 150 men double digging the soil for 10 years before he put any plants in the ground. And at the same time, he was sponsoring the great plant hunters that went out to the Sino Himalayas and were bringing back a lot of different species of plants. His particular passion were rhododendrons. After finishing work on the soil, he carefully nurtured the rhododendrons. Another 10 years passed before he died, but he never saw them come into flower. Paul George Forrest, who has been collecting dried specimens of seeds in China for both Edinburgh University and some private subscribers, died suddenly of heart failure at Tengji. And Professor Smith writes to me that his collections must be more or less complete. Do you think that anything can be done to secure that the consul gets a consignment sent to this country? And of course, it talks about the remuneration, but it would be a great loss and a great pity if all the work of the last year of his life should be lost when there seems to be a chance. In the Family Museum in London's financial district, Marie Louise reads for the first time a letter written by her great-grandfather about the plant hunters. They crossed oceans to bring back exotic plants from the mysterious east. Each subsequent generation of the Rothschilds inherited this obsession with gardening. The immigrant rhododendrons are now firmly rooted in the gardens. When Marie Louise, the fourth generation since the arrival of the plants, was born, the rhododendrons finally bloomed in Exbury Gardens. Very sadly, I haven't been to China. I would love to go to China. I would love to, I would love to see the plants in, in the wild where where they were first seen. I mean, I can't, I, I can only imagine the extraordinary, you know, the extraordinary visuals of being in places, you know, like the Yunnan province and, and, and seeing the great rhododendrons, the scale of them as well, um, and coming around the corner and, and seeing something that you've never seen before, whether it's the rhododendrons, you know, the, the, the scale of having a mountainside of these plants. I mean, we think we're lucky with 200 acres of it, but a mountainside, that's new. That's never been, I mean, how, you know, there's so many tens of thousands of plants. As a child, each flower she picked, each tree she climbed, bore the family's affection for the rhododendrons. This is a garden built with eternal enthusiasm. Now 100 years have passed, and Marie Louise has a fresh inspiration. Uh, our driver, who is Marie Louise Aegis, the uh, granddaughter of Mr. Leo.
And still, at the grand old age of 40, I'm still very happy to climb up a tree to go and lop off a branch or something like that. I think my mother always said that, Grandpa always said that if he was ever going to come back, he would come back as a robin. If I'm sitting down, down by, the, by the river and this little robin comes and sits down beside me and I, he sort of get, you sort of nod in a sense that sort of, no one's there, so they can't, can't see me and, and ridicule me, but you sort of feel, feel his presence there with you in the gardens, always, always.